Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra, and welcome to the video where I teach you how to use decorators in Python. Decorators are especially useful, they're used in a lot of places, especially in libraries and especially in object-oriented programming, because they can provide a template for extra functionality. So they reduce code replication, they reduce code redundancy as well, and they generally just make everything a lot prettier. On top of this, you can get extra built-in functionality. Um, so for example, the property uh, decorator in object-oriented programming, but of course we will get into that in a different video. If you find the video helpful at any point, then consider giving it a thumbs up to let me know and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into it. And so we are in Visual Studio Code this time. You know, I thought seeing as we're moving on to more intermediate topics, we'd move on to a more advanced IDE. We're actually making progress. You can use whatever IDE you want, of course. There isn't really uh, that much of a, of a difference between them all. The one thing I would say is that I still wouldn't recommend using PyCharm if you are still quite new, because it does things very differently <laughs> uh, to some other IDEs. And it, it's, it's better to just get the basics before, you know, moving on to PyCharm with all the abstractions and the extra stuff it has on top of it. Um, but today we're doing decorators. So decorators are used quite a bit, especially in like libraries and stuff, and especially in object-oriented programming, which we're gonna be covering in a future episode. But essentially decorators allow you to reuse bits of code without having to like constantly rewrite everything. Um, and it also allows, especially in object-oriented programming, it allows for some other things. So you can have static methods, class methods, and properties. These are all done through decorators, but you know, I'll, show them off more when we actually get into the OOP ones because there'll probably be a few on those. Um, but essentially, a decorator is a wrapper around a function. So if we just uh, say create a standard function here, actually call it a decent name like that, and it just have, not return, just have it print, uh, this is a normal function. You know, it's a perfectly normal function right now. Uh, and actually, what I'll do is I'll run it just to show you that it is a perfectly normal function. Uh, and then, you know, function. Uh, whoa, hello. <laughs> Let's just get rid of all that. Uh, it'll be python decorators.py. You see, this is a normal function. It just takes this function, it just prints out the result. But if we wanted to add some extra stuff, we could apply a decorator. So what we could do is we can uh, go up here and just, call, we're just gonna call this decorator for the time being. You can call it whatever you want. The name does not matter at all. And we're gonna pass a function object into it. And then we need to actually create another function inside it. Now this can also be called whatever you want. I'm gonna call it inner. I think a lot of people call it wrapper, but I don't understand uh, why, because surely this bit's the wrapper, but I don't know. Maybe it does make sense and I'm just an idiot, who knows. But I call it inner, just to say it makes a bit more sense in my head. Um, and to actually call the function, we could just do func. Uh, and then, you know, and then at the end of the decorator function, return inner. And if we do at decorator here, you'll see that it doesn't actually do anything different right now. And that's because we haven't implemented any extra functionality in here. So essentially what we are doing here is we are uh, taking this function and passing it into the decorator and then we are running everything inside inner. So everything inside this function is run, um, but we, we do actually need to call func to actually call the function to begin with. If we don't call that at all, nothing will happen. Um, and it also return an indentation error because it doesn't like me, but you know what I mean. Um, so we can bring that back. So. I'm just going to print some extra statements here just to kind of show you uh, visually what it's doing. So we can print uh, something happening, uh, whoops, uh, before. And then we could also do something happening after as well. And now if we run that function, we'll see that we, we have something running before, something happening after, but the normal function is in the middle. Um, you know, as it appears here. So it's going to the inner, it's first printing uh, this here. It's then running our function, which prints this. And then it's, you know, printing um, after as well. And you can put as much as you want in here. Uh, there is basically no limit to what you can do. Uh, you can also pass f um, things into here uh, directly. So if I save um, like a word, uh, for example, when I just have words, this is just a botch, but you know, whatever, it's fine. And then word, and then I can pass, you know, word 
in here or just say, I don't know, hello. <laughs> I'm unoriginal. And we can pass the function, uh, sorry, we can pass the argument through here and it'll actually run here as well. So we can call function without the the argument, but we can call the argument within the decorator itself. Uh, this generally isn't done at all, but you know, I'm just showing you kind of that it could be done. But our decorator isn't perfect so far. It'll work for, you know, a good amount of functions, but it won't work for anything with arguments in it. So if I say created another one down here, we gave it a decorator, um, well, decorator, and say display bio, and then we had our name, and then we had our age, which I'm going to set as 22. And then we had a print statement that said, my name is uh, name, so passing name in, and I am age years old. Uh, if you don't know what the difference between name and age is here, by the way, you don't know what this is doing, then I'll have a video in the cards talking about args and quags in more detail. Um, but essentially, our, uh, our decorator isn't going to work here. So if we do something like that, uh, it's you know it's missing our acquired argument name. So, so okay, we can provide it. And then, oh no, it's, it's still missing our argument because inner... Uh, doesn't take anything itself. Uh, so we can't pass anything to the here because inner doesn't take anything. So what we can do is we can do star args, star star quags, and then we can also put that in here as well. And now uh, any arguments and keyword arguments that are passed to this function will be passed to the decorator, and then they'll just be passed straight through back to the function again. So now if we run this again, you see, you know, um, we have we have the same something happening before something happening after, but this time we have my name is Ethan. I am twenty two years old, which is true. I am <laughs> my name is Ethan, and I am twenty two. Um, and then if we pass in an age as well, so you know in a few months I'll be twenty three. So we can pass through and say twenty three. You could do like one hundred and five or whatever, and we can pass it all through the same. Uh, and it takes you know our arguments and, and keyword arguments as we put in and you can pass as many in as you want or you can pass none at all as function shows here because this just takes you know any arguments and keyword arguments that are given even if there are none at all so that is the basic concept behind decorators uh, it's used in a lot more complicated scenarios as well uh, this is just kind of a, a really simple rundown of it. Um, but if you have any questions uh, about what you've seen here, then feel free to leave a comment down below or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. But yeah, with that, I'd like to thank my amazing patrons are on screen now. One pound a month, you can be on that screen too. And I will see you next time where we do something else. I'm not really sure what that video is going to be, but the next How to Python video will be type in annotations. Uh, so look forward to that.